I think I feel it. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah. it. I got it. I got it. I got a book here. And a top. And a whisk. Ta-da! Morning, Suze. Hello. Today, we're with Susie from Oak Hill Vets. Oh, grab this. Hey, girl. I thought this was a little bit better context. So like I said, Susie is here from Oak Hill. We are doing something very special today. When we first got cows in, we used the product on the cow's bed. And I was like, and we got, like say, one case of mastitis. We're milking 120 cows. We only got one case of mastitis last year because we used this product. Two or three weeks down the line, I had a cow, one, two, two, in calf to sex semen. She got E. coli on a Saturday. We jabbed her up with some Loxycom, some diatrim, a tube. And then in the morning, she went a bit Worse, she walked into the parlor. We milked her. Loxicom is a pain relief and anti-inflammatory. Um, took away that pain and a bit of antibiotics as well. And in the morning, she wouldn't get up. I gave her another dose of Loxicom, some antibiotics. Uh, stripped her out, in the, out of that quarter, gave her a tube in that quarter. And then by the afternoon, we had James from Oak Hill around. We put a drip onto her and uh, she just went backwards. So it's just a community of things. I rung the vets and spoke to them. He said, what more could I do? And then Susie said, you could have pumped her. I probably pumped her, what, Saturday night when you found the E. coli? Yeah, yeah. As soon as it starts, really. With E. coli, when it knocks them sick, main thing is get loads of fluids into them. So we have never done that before. I've never had a loss of a cow before due to E. coli. So that was a massive shock to us, especially being such a good cow. Again, what can we do? Susie said, get a pump. We got one of the select pumps from, who's it from? Nimrod. Nimrod. So we've got a Nimrod pump from here. Susie said, I will show you how to use it. And I was like, cool. So some people would be interested in this as well of how to pump a cow. I've never pumped one before. I bagged them. So when you bag a calf, bag the calf, not a cow, um, you go down the left hand side, make sure in the stomach. I'm going to guess it's the same-ish yeah, with this. Similar yeah. principles. So what the candidate we have here is 118. She is a sixth or fifth carver. I can check my app. Let's go here. One second. Seven years old. She is a sixth carver now. Uh, she carved two days ago. She had a bad foot during dry off. She's got a block on. The bandage was put back on about a week ago. She's holding on to a cleansing, which is really annoying. And she has this empty space, doesn't she, Suze? So the cow's rumen sits on the left-hand side. And when their rumen is empty, then quite often you see this dip behind the ribs. So yeah, for her, sheer rumen is a bit empty. So she's not eating as much. She's also a little bit loose at the back end, scouring a little bit, which means she's losing a bit more fluid. So definitely she would really benefit from some oral fluids. And a good candidate to do so. And I thought this was a perfect opportunity to use our new pump for Susie to come and show us how to do. And she is gonna feel so 10 times better from having a pump. First job, what we've got to do? Well, we need to prepare the bucket. You always want to use warm water, get whatever powder you want. Because she's a freshly carved cow, then we'll use the fresh cow sachet just because it's got calcium, magnesium, things that fresh cows really need and will help her get going quicker, make her feel much better. I'd get those things sorted first before you even start pumping them. Okay, amazing. Right, warm water. Washer, put that. What, that? Through there, yeah. And then just thread that on. This is the bit that's in through the nose and mouth. And then. This is why we've got Susie here. Fresh cow powder. Look at the size of that thing. It's like you've got a big cauldron. So you want a well restrained. Is this well enough? Yeah. I'm guessing a head yoke would be better as well. What is it called? A head lifter? Head. What are they oh, called? Head scoop. Head scoop would be, be even better for this. Yeah, if you've got one that's really thrown its head about, then that can be helpful. But generally, usually as long as their head is trapped, then that's enough and you're able to, to manage it. I tend to stand at the side of the girl. Is it the same as a calf, left side? Yeah, use my hand just so, as you can see, when my hand's positioned and push up, and that makes them open their mouth. Yeah. And then you put the pipe down the middle of the mouth to begin with. Oh, wow. So then it's got to go over the lump on the tongue and then you push it in and then you secure it in place. So we've got the nose clip in. This next bit, we need to see that the pipe is going down the left-hand side okay. of the cow because the left-hand side is where the esophagus, the food pipe runs. You can hold it there and look. So it is good if you've got the head slightly angled like this. And then she's constantly chewing 
down this this holy bit here. Yeah, you won't see it that high up, but this bit. Okay, you'll see it is there. Where you'll see it. Okay, come on. Sometimes I even feel it because you should feel it running down. I think I can see it moving. Yeah, there. it's there, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, so what Susie said, sometimes she has another person, so when that person's pushing it in, she can feel it go in the right spot. So you've gone for the middle to start with, and then you've tried to go left, have you? Or you just go um, straight middle the whole time? Well, if you just go straight middle the whole time, because she's chewing, it will automatically just slip to the left-hand okay. side. So you don't need to worry about aiming it too much. And then you gradually push it down, and you either see or you can feel it. Just pass past your hand. I think I feel it. Yeah, yeah, I got, yeah. It. I got it, I got it. That's so cool. Keep pushing it gently in until it just stops. You want it in a good way, so there's only about that, which is maybe about a metre left out. Yeah. And then you lock it in place by just twisting this blue thing to the side there. Yep, so, so that won't. That tube stays in, in place. Great. Okay. Great. And then you can pump it. So which one do you use first? So I'd use that one. Yep. So the one with the powder in, and then you can tip the water into that afterwards. To clean your pump out. I've well, seen many yeah. a vet do this. Actually, no, I haven't. I never have to do this ever. Of course not. <laughs> the only good thing about having a vet is that you don't have to pump. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just That's what all vets say. Or well, when vet has um, vet students with them for a week, they're like, oh look, we've got a automatic pump today. Like that, yeah? Yep, and then just go slowly to begin with. We're just making sure she's comfortable. Which she is. But she's tolerating that really well. Cool. It's good. So she's cutting on it. So if anyone doesn't know what cutting is when they move the mouth like that. Right. And then I'll tip this in. Do all the vet does. Yeah, pull of it in, and then when you come to the end, yeah, you want to pump a good few pumps of just air, that's it. And then you untwist this so it's unlocked, and then pull it fully out. So you feel a click, so you know the pipe's fully out, and then you just undo the nose clip. And there we go, she's nice and full. Nice and full, we'll just put this away. Say me and Heidi are doing it, we're pumping a cow that we need pumping. Uh, we put our hand there, and I don't, Heidi doesn't feel that. That would be into her lungs then, will it? It possibly would be, yeah. You would, would you ever feel that and it would be in the wrong places again? No. So no, if you so feel... If you feel it, it's in. Yeah. That's why I pretty much always do that because then you can be confident that you're definitely in the right place. Because if it goes into the windpipe, the trachea, the windpipe has um, cartilaginous rings that go down it, so you can't feel the pipe if it goes into oh, the windpipe okay. yeah. because it's within those rings of the trachea. Sometimes you can see it really nicely and if you see it pass as well then you don't need to feel. Okay cool. What we've done is there we've pumped all the fluids into here. We've got the powder in there which will increase her appetite. If she's feeling a bit sick not maybe eating as much of her normal ration as she would do than a would. While she's scouring I probably would pump her yeah, because she'll be losing fluid. Now we've pumped this cow what is a normal cow that you'd end up you candidate to be pumped? What yeah. should you look for? So there's loads You'll end up using this pump loads because there's loads of different times that I'd use a pump. Immediately when they've calved, if they're not getting up, not getting eating, then I'd probably pump them with a fresh cow sachet because it's, you get loads of fluids into them, you stimulate their appetite, you really hopefully get them going. If they've ever had to have an operation, like because of a twisted stomach, always immediately pump them after that. And then as long as they're eating well, then hopefully they won't need to be pumped again. If you have like your toxic cow, so toxic cows can be due to E. coli mastitis or metritis, which is really bad infection at the back end. I would definitely would pump those and be pumping them even three times a day, maybe even more, depending on how sick they are with them. You just need to get fluids on board with those guys. Oak Hill did a meeting the other day, a Red Rose meeting that you do every couple of months or whatever. It's normally winter time. They did a virtual one, which was really cool. So we talk about E. coli. The biggest thing was painkillers, anti-inflammatories and fluids. So number 118, Sixth Carver has been pumped. A big thank you to Susie for agreeing to be on video with me today because I wanted to learn how to do it and I think it was important. Anyone else watching this, if you're a vet or you are a wannabe vet, this might be a little bit interesting to you and you might learn something, hopefully. Thank you to Susie, thank you to Oak Hill. I now have a pump. I hope you enjoyed this video, hope you learned something. Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the YouTube channel and we will see you in the next one.